much. What do you do when you donate that? Like, what's a good way to donate in your opinion? So there's like, uh, you know, ranging from not donating to donating to one thing, to donate to a bunch of things, to like getting involved or seeing the impact or like, you know, I know people who, if they donate to Africa, they'll actually, their family will go take a trip every year so that they're more connected to the people and they actually see the impact and they take their kids with them so that they see the impact. Like, what have you found that's a good way to give? So we have a balance. It's my wife and I team up. Um, this is going to sound bad, but I don't like volunteering my time. My wife loves volunteering her time. I think it's very inefficient for me to volunteer my time. I should make the money uh, versus volunteering my time because the money or the hours spent, if we donated the money, it would have a much bigger impact to the cause than if I actually spent my time. I don't think my that wife sounds bad. Loves, yeah, and my wife loves spending the time. And like from going to soup kitchens or whatever it may be. So she picks the causes. We have a few theses. So like one thesis is, is we, or not really thesis, but rules. One rule is, is we don't like money going to organizations that have tons of high overhead. We actually want our money going to the causes. So if it doesn't go to the cause, then we tend to not pick that um, organization. The second thing that we look for is uh, organizations who are, um, uh, like uh, self-sufficient, right? It's just like, how can this continue going even if someone wasn't managing it? So like a great program, for example, is my wife likes donating to women's education. We used to donate also to men's education as well. So you find these people in these villages, you say, hey, you can't afford to go to school, get a degree, we'll pay for you to go to college, go get a degree, come back, teach kids in your village for a few years, whether it's under a tree or anything, people can learn anywhere, right? And then, you know, go move on with your life and do whatever you want, but at least you're giving back to your own community. And what we found is when we started giving, because we've been doing this for so long now, uh, well, actually not that long, but when I mean long, I'm talking about like 10, 11 years where we've been donating. And it, it's picked up quite a bit over the last like five, six years. When we started giving the money to men, a lot of the men, we saw a very low conversion rate from them actually coming back and teaching people in the village. Well, when we gave the money to women for their education, a lot of them came back and fulfilled on the promise. Because it's not like you get a signed contract, right? It's just like, hey, we're going to pay for everything. Come back, help people out within your village. Which country? Um, uh, we've done this in both India and Africa. So different parts of Africa and uh, in India. And then another program that we've done is like growing gardens where a lot of people who have AIDS don't take the right, uh, don't take their medication and aren't doing well. They're getting, they're given the medication for free, but if your body doesn't have the right nutrients, it rejects it. So what we'll do is we'll do programs like growing gardens. We'll give them money. They grow food. And then not only do they uh, eat nutritiously or well, they'll more likely take their medication. And you're also growing enough food so that way other people in the village can also uh, eat. So it's like, but my wife picks all the causes. She vets them. She loves it. Like she'll go, this is Wednesday. In two days, she'll end up going to a function, uh, scouting out more nonprofits and organizations. I won't go. Like, I think it's a waste of time. I'm like, if I go make more money, she can donate it. It's a better ROI than if I go spend three, four hours mingling when she could just do that and I can go make more so that way we can donate more. 